हेलो दोस्तों आई वेलकम यू टू अवर टूडे टॉपिक इलेक्ट्रोस्टैटिक्स द वर्ड इलेक्ट्रोस्टैटिक्स कैन बी ब्रोकन इनटू टू पार्ट्स इलेक्ट्रो एंड स्टैटिक्स इलेक्ट्रो रिफर्स टू इलेक्ट्रॉन एंड स्टैटिक्स रिफर्स टू रेस्ट दस इलेक्ट्रोस्टैटिक्स रिफर्स टू इलेक्ट्रॉन एट रेस्ट नाउ इलेक्ट्रॉन कैरीज चार्ज हेल्स द वर्ड इलेक्ट्रोस्टैटिक्स मीन्स चार्जेस एट rest what do we mean by charge there are two kinds of charges one is positive charge and another is negative charge positive charge occurs on proton negative charge occurs on electron when do we say body is charged generally every body has equal number of protons and electrons hence every body is electrically neutral still if a body has excess of electrons or lack of electrons then the body is said to be charged how do we uh, make a body charged how do we charge a body for example if i take this comb does it have any charge no it is neutral why because every atom in it has equal number of protons and equal number of electrons thus this comb is electrically neutral so how can i charge it by combing if i comb using the if i comb my hair using the comb it will get charged because when we comb our hair there is friction there is rubbing between atoms of comb and atoms of hair in that process there is transfer of electrons from either hair to comb or comb to hair hence the comb may have excess of electrons or lack of electrons if the comb has excess of electrons then it is negatively charged if the comb has lack of electrons then it becomes positively charged that is how we charge a body when it has excess of electrons it is negatively charged when it has lack of electrons it is positively charged so this is the first method of charging any body which we have seen here how do we charge a body the first method of charging is by rubbing or friction the example of it is comb we rubbing with hair or when in school days you might have used scale to rub with your hair and then the bits of paper cling to the scale that is one method of charging a body second method of charging a body by contact of charged body with uncharged body let us say this is a charged body i comb my hair and the comb becomes positively charged because of transfer of electrons from comb to my hair now this comb is charged if i take another comb this comb is neutral the blue comb is neutral because i have not still combed my hair this comb is positively charged this comb is neutral if i touch comb one with another comb then there is redistribution of charges and both of the combs attain positive charge so this is second method of charging by contact of charged body which is this one with uncharged body which is this comb so when i make a contact between charged body and uncharged body both the bodies attain charge this is second method of charging the third method of charging which we have is by induction let us now understand method 3 of charging which is by induction if you remember we had positively charged pink comb if i bring neutral blue comb nearby positively charged pink comb then the electrons of the blue comb will be attracted towards the positive charge of the pink comb that is what i have shown here the positively charged pink comb attracts the electrons of the blue comb towards itself hence these are the electrons of the blue comb because the electrons have come from this side to that side this side will have positive charge is this comb to now called as charged or is it still neutral it is still neutral because the amount of negative charge equals amount of positive charge so this is still neutral we have not still charged comb 2 the comb 2 is still neutral 
going to step 2 what have what we do is we ground the comb to we ground the comb to what do we mean by grounding grounding means we add we put a wire we put a wire from comb to and touch the other end of the wire to ground we hold one end of the wire to comb to and touch another end of the wire to ground what happens in that process the electrons from the ground they attract or they they are attracted towards the positive charge of the right side of comb to the electrons of the ground are attracted towards the positive charge of right side of the comb hence this positive charge of right side of blue comb neutralizes after that what we do in step 3 this side is now negatively charged and this side now which was initially positive charge is now neutral in next step step 3 we remove this ground wire we remove this ground wire due to that the negatively charged electrons of comb 2 remain on the left side hence now comb 2 becomes negatively charged in this method we have successfully charged comb 2 without touching the for positively charged comb 1 in this method we have successfully charged comb 2 without touching positively charged comb 1 so this method is by inducing the charges or attracting the charges in this case the positive charge of comb 1 induced or attract, attracted the electrons of comb 2 towards itself hence this method is known as charging by induction principle of quantization of charge it states that charge is integral multiple of electronic charge इसका मतलब समझने का हम लोग कोशिश करते हैं। अगर मैंने मार कर लिया और रब किया with my hair, let us say चार इलेक्ट्रॉन हेयर से मार्कर में आ गए, तो फिर मार्कर पे कितना चार्ज आएगा? चार इलेक्ट्रॉन्स चार्ज, which means minus four e, minus four e। और अगर मान लो मार्कर से चार इलेक्ट्रॉन्स मेरे हेयर में चले गए देन चार्ज ऑन द मार्कर विल बी प्लस 4 प्लस 4 मार्कर के पास माइनस चार्ज आएगा या प्लस चार्ज आएगा दैट डिपेंड्स ऑन द इलेक्ट्रोनेगेटिविटी अगर मार्कर ज्यादा इलेक्ट्रोनेगेटिव है तो मार्कर के पास माइनस 4 और अगर हेयर ज्यादा इलेक्ट्रोनेगेटिव है तो मार्कर के पास प्लस 4 4 और 40 डिपेंड्स ऑन अमाउंट ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन्स ट्रांसफर्ड अगर 10 इलेक्ट्रॉन ट्रांसफर हुए तो 10 ही, दो इलेक्ट्रॉन चार ट्रांसफर हुए तो 2 ही, लाइक दैट। चार्ज इस इंटीग्रल मल्टीपल ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉनिक चार्ज। एक इलेक्ट्रॉन ट्रांसफर हुआ 1 ही, दो इलेक्ट्रॉन ट्रांसफर हुए 2 ही, 10 इलेक्ट्रॉन्स ट्रांसफर हुए 10 ही, n इलेक्ट्रॉन्स ट्रांसफर हुए n ही। अगर सब्सटेंस ज्यादा इलेक्ट्रोनेगेटिव है, तो फिर n। अगर सब्सटेंस इलेक्ट्रोपॉजिटिव है, तो प्लस n e। ये Q is charge on the body. N is number of electrons gained or transferred. अगर electrons electronegativity ज़्यादा है material का, तो electrons will be gained and the charge will be negative. And if the electronegativity is less, that means the substance is electropositive, then it will transfer electrons and the charge on the body will be positive. Here E is electronic charge, which is 1.6 into 10 to minus 19 coulomb. Here are some values which we need to remember. Charge on electron minus e minus 1.6 into 10 to minus 90 coulomb. Charge on proton plus e plus 1.6 into 10 to minus 19 coulomb. Mass of electron 9.11 into 10 to minus 31 kg. Extremely small minus 31 power मतलब extremely small negligible mass. Mass of proton 1.673 into 10 to minus 27 kg more than pro, uh, the mass of electron mass of neutron 1.675 into 10 to minus 27 kg which is again almost equal to the mass of proton and much much greater than the mass of electron other than this we need to remember one more value 
वन एटॉमिक मास यूनिट विच इज डिनोटेड बाय वन ए एम यू विच इज वन यू विच इज वन पॉइंट सिक्स सिक्स इंटू टेन डेज टू माइनस ट्वेंटी सेवन के जी दीज थ्री वैल्यूज आर ऑलमोस्ट इक्वल द मास ऑफ प्रोटोन मास ऑफ न्यूट्रॉन एंड मास वन ए एम यू ऑल दीज आर ऑलमोस्ट इक्वल टू इच अदर न्यूट्रॉन बींग द हाइएस्ट मास प्रोटोन लेसर एंड वन ए एम यू इवन लेसर सो दीज आर द वैल्यूज विच वी नीड टू रिमेंबर Let us now study Coulomb's law. Suppose we have two charges. On rubbing, we will have charges on both these points. So suppose we have two point charges separated by a distance r. So if both the charges are positive, they will repel each other. If both the charges are negative, they will repel each other. If one is positive, one is negative, they will attract each other. So if we have two point charges, q1 and q2. Separated by distance r, r is center to center distance. Distance between center of first charge and center of second charge. Then what does Coulomb's law state? Coulomb's law states that the force of attraction or repulsion between two point charges separated by distance r is directly proportional to the product of charges and inversely proportional to the square of distance between them. That is. The force of attraction or repulsion is directly proportional to the product of charges and inversely proportional to the square of distance between them. If I combine these two equations, what we get is force is directly proportional to product of charges and inversely proportional to square of distance. If I remove this proportionality sign and introduce a equal sign, then force is k q1 q2 upon r square, where k is a Constant known as Coulomb's constant. Its value is nine into ten raised to nine SI units. Coulomb's constant can also be expressed as one upon four pi epsilon dot, where epsilon dot is a new constant known as permittivity of air or vacuum. So this is about Coulomb's law. The force between two charges is directly proportional to product of charges and inversely proportional to the Center to center distance between two charges. K being Coulomb's constant, its value nine into ten raised to nine SI units. The Coulomb constant can also be expressed as one upon four pi epsilon dot in terms of a new constant epsilon dot, which is known as permittivity of air or vacuum. Next, we will see Coulomb's law in vector form. Coulomb's law in vector form. Suppose we have two charges, both are positive, then they will repel each other. If both are negative, then too they will repel each other because like charges repel. If one of the charge is positive and another is negative, then they will attract each other. Opposite charges attract, like charges repel. If I ask you what is the direction of force on Q one due to Q two? Force of repulsion on Q1 due to Q2. It is in the left direction. Left means two to one. Left means two to one. Two to one is left direction. So force on Q1 due to Q2 is in two one direction. Now let us see this two one means what? F12. Is force on Q1 due to Q2 by Coulomb's law? It is k Q1 Q2 upon r square. This is the magnitude of the force. Direction is from 2 to 1, as I told you. Direction of force on Q1 due to Q2 is in left. That means 2 1, 2 1, 2 So that means unit vector will be 2 1 unit vector. Direction is given by this unit vector r 2 1. The direction is in two to one. That means left direction. Hence, force on Q one due to Q two is k Q one Q two by r square into unit vector r two one. Now we know unit vector can be written as vector upon magnitude of vector. R two one unit vector can be written as r two one vector upon magnitude of r two one, which is r. Hence, another 
form of Coulomb's law in vector form becomes k q1 q2 upon r square into r21 vector upon r. On multiplying r square and r, we get r cube in the denominator. Hence, Coulomb's law in vector form can also be written as k q1 q2 upon r cube into r21 vector. We will better use this notation as compared to this notation. The unit vector notation is preferred. Hence, we will generally write Coulomb's law in vector form. Force on Q1 due to Q2 is k Q1 Q2 by R square into R21 unit vector. Coming to the force on Q2 due to Q1. If you see carefully, the repulsive force on Q2 due to Q1 is in the right direction. That means 1 to direction. 1 to 2 is right direction. So force on Q1 due to, force on Q2 due to Q1. F21 becomes, F21 becomes K Q1 Q2 upon R square. The magnitude of force and the direction, direction of force on this charge is in right. That means 1 to, that means unit vector 1 to, R12 unit vector, R12 cap. Again, unit vector R12 can be expressed as vector upon magnitude of vector. Hence, we can write force on Q2 due to Q1 as K Q1 Q2 upon R square into R12 vector upon magnitude of vector. On multiplying R square by R, we get R cube in the denominator. Hence, force on Q2 due to Q1 is K Q1 Q2 upon R cube into R12 vector. Again, as I said, we will use this notation, the unit vector notation as compared to this notation. This is if the case if both the charges are either positive or negative. That means this is the, these are the formulas for repulsive force. What if one of the charges is positive and another is negative? We will have a case like this. First charge Q1 being positive, second charge Q2 being negative. Now, if you see carefully, in this case, the direction of force has reversed. Now, these are, these, both these charges are attracting each other towards itself. So, force on Q1 due to Q2 is in the right direction. Right means 1, 2. Right means 1, 2. Hence, F12 can be written as KQ1, Q2 upon R square into R12 cap. Coming to force on Q2 due to Q1, it is towards the left. Left means 2-1. Left means 2-1. Hence, force on Q2 due to Q1 is KQ1 Q2 upon R square into R21 cap. This is Coulomb's law in vector form.